That is our hope and prayer in all that we do. We honour you in word and deed. Father God, come now and minister to us, we pray. As we hear from your word, Holy Spirit of God, speak to our hearts and lives. My, my thoughts be your thoughts, Lord. My ways, your ways. We thank you that everybody matters and everyone can have a place in your church. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's message is called Everyone Matters. So welcome, good to have you here once again, joining us in person or online, it's great to have you with us. 2020. This year has not been for nothing. This year isn't a lost cause. God is alive, the church is alive, and we are alive. We have opportunities to make the next few months count. Before we flip over the calendar to 2021, and for many maybe breathe a sigh of relief, everyone matters. All those people there packed into that train, they matter. I want us to be a church that's not just about the numbers, but more about the names. Don't get stuck just praising the numbers, but let us be about the names. Oh, we had 40 views, 8 people watching online, so many likes. Friends, the numbers have names. And here you are, online, in person. Because numbers have names. It's, it's, it's exciting to see who we engage with each week, in person, online, however we're doing that. But you are more than just a number, you are a name. And that name tells a story. And that name has had experiences in life that can contribute to the local church. Because everybody matters and everyone is welcome. If we open the book of Acts, we see numbers are important and so are the names and it's exciting as God gave birth to the church. Everybody can find their place in his church and in his story. It's Acts chapter 2, if you've got a Bible there or up on the screen. The church of Jesus Christ was born and the Holy Spirit of God lit that flame. Acts 2, 42 and reading. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Everyone was filled with awe. I love that. It wasn't the super spiritual or the inner circle or the professional Christian who got it. Everyone got it. Everyone who was part of the church was dumbfounded at what God was doing and everyone was in awe. So when God shows up and when God is in the midst, people are amazed at who he is and what he can do. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers, continuing to read there, were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to one another who had need. That's how you survive. By helping those in need. If you have a need, we will do our best to help you. This has been a year of supporting one another and helping each other out. Before, during and beyond this crisis, we are here and we care. 
We will bear one another's burdens. We will lean in and help you and support you as best we can. We are looking for ways to come alongside you and serve and care and help you out. If it was good enough for Jesus, amen, it's good enough for us. We weep with those who weep and we rejoice with those who rejoice. We want to lift you up and support you so you're able to do the same for someone else, maybe in a different time or a different season. Every day as we continue to read, they continue to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Daily, daily, someone got saved. Daily, someone was moved from death to life. Daily someone found Jesus, new believers, new people being converted, happening every day. Often people ask me, or pastors ask me, is the church just about the numbers? Or is it about the names? Yes, numbers are important because just above this scripture, we are told that 3,000 people got saved that day. The text doesn't say a bunch or a few or it says 3,000 people on that day got saved. Now these people find themselves eating together, meals, sharing life, sharing needs, sharing concerns. And you don't have a meal with people and not find out their name. Isn't that true? You don't open your home to new believers and not introduce yourself and share something about who you are. Church is about the numbers, the names, and discipleship and spiritual maturity. It's about hope and prayer, yes. Needs and support, yes. Songs and sacrifice, yes. Conversations and communion, yes. Problems and preaching, yes. And that's what the church looks like. And 3,000 got saved and more were coming daily every single day. Don't worry, we can find room for you. I'm excited to meet new people, see new faces, hear new stories. Been exciting over recent weeks to have people pop in and visit us and want to know what we're all about. We can find a place for you. And be a home for you. And many of you have discovered that. Because everyone matters. And there is a seat for you. It's everybody in their right place. Coming together and being the church. And sharing the journey of faith. The Lord added people daily. Would we be ready for that? Are we praying for that? He adds the people and we provide the room. It's numbers and names. Let's make 2020 more about what God has done in people's lives than all oh, we got through it. Oh, we just survived. We struggled along, but oh, praise be to God. What will we hear and what will we say? 2020 was my year of spiritual transformation and a great awakening happened in my soul and I found Jesus as my Lord and Saviour and His amazing grace. And I found a purpose for my life and I'm faithfully serving and giving and worshipping and caring. Because it was about everybody. Everybody in this passage had a recent encounter with Jesus. There's no 30-year-old faith in Jesus here. It's fresh, it's new. Fresh in their minds, a real encounter with Jesus. 
Peter preached and they got saved. Fresh encounters with Jesus happening everywhere. Everywhere they turned, in homes, in the marketplace, down the street. Everybody counts in the story. You count in his story. It's our AGM today. And as I read and looked through our reports, it was clear to me that everyone matters. As we minister in homes, as we minister in schools, as we care for people in need, as we do our eye, as we support chaplains, as we do missions, as we do worship, as we do food, as we do a whole gamut of things. It was very clear to me that every one matters. Might be a good theme for us as we come into a new year. Everybody matters. Everybody matters. Let's be reminded of our mission our vision and our mission up on the screen there. That is what vision is the big picture, people. To be a haven for all and to be a nurturing family to those in need, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So we have the big vision. Vision, that was good, wasn't it? We have the big vision. And then we have our mission. So how are we going to do that? How do we make the vision a reality? Well, we have a mission. To bring people into a personal and growing relationship with Jesus Christ by showing God's love in word and deed. And no doubt a number of years ago, you set those words in place. And that is who we are. As a church community, because everybody matters by the grace of God. Not just words on a page, friends, but let us live them out. Let us be reminded today of what we are here for. Do you ever ask yourself, why is that in the Bible? Anyone? Why did they bother to put that there? In John 4, if you would humour me for a couple of minutes. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptising more disciples than John. Although in fact it was not Jesus who baptised, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Why do we need to know this? Why is it here? We're about to move into one of the most powerful stories in the Gospels. It's the encounter of the woman at the well. No one's highlighting that verse, are they? No one's circling that. No one's remembering, oh, I remember Brother Johnny preached a ripping sermon in 1985 on that verse. Because no, we're not, are we? I think it's here to remind us and to show us that Jesus wants to operate in kingdom power and deal with a group of people who were amazing at missing the point and being narrow-minded and saw it as a race and saw it as a competition. Oh no, John's got lots of disciples and now this bloke Jesus has arrived and he's got lots of disciples and people are baptising and who will they follow? Who will they serve? Are they preaching the right gospel? Are they having the right baptism? Oh my goodness. And so the... Jesus is about to step into a town and do a transformational work in a place that no one would count as important at all. And they want people to take sides. Because Jesus is about everyone and every story and every situation. And Jesus is about you and I. If you're willing to let him in. If you're willing to stop and have a conversation. Because it's more than just numbers, it's names and now it's places. 
small-minded thinking always misses the bigness of God and the power of God Almighty that is available to us to change people, cities and nations. Don't miss the point. It's powerful. John 4, 39-42, it's the end of the whole story. It shows us that everybody matters. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two more days. And because of his many because of that, and because of his words, many more became believers. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the saviour of the world. Yes, he is. We have heard it and we've seen it. This man really is the saviour of the world. Hallelujah. That's right. This woman had a past and a story. And now she's turned evangelist, shock horror, and a Samaritan. It was all against her. But not for Jesus. Because everybody mattered. Her life transformed. And wanted, she wanted to see others. Their lives transformed. By the message of the gospel. Do we care anymore? Don't we want to see others. Transformed by the message. Of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are on that road. Whatever your questions. Whatever your concerns. Because everyone matters. Even Samaritans. And those people with a past. Even your brother. Or that grumpy neighbour. Or that co-worker that loves to have a dig at you every single day because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Everyone matters. Charles, uh, not Charles Stanley, Andy Stanley reminded me of this. That's Andy Stanley, if you wonder. Charles is his dad, but that's a whole other story. It's not enough to believe correctly to make a difference. We must act on what we say we believe. Not just words on a page, but action. It's not enough to believe correctly to make a difference. We must act, friends, on what we say we believe. Well done. Well done. As we act on what we say we believe. And today we come and we give thanks to God for that. And we can make room for everyone. Because every one matters. May God bless you. Amen.